Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also please don't forget to subscribe. So in this video, let's have generation of wind loads and to be incorporated with the dead loads in order to analyze the frame shown, interior frame shown by computing the external reactions at the supports. So the typical interior frame of a basketball court in Tacloban City is shown. The wind comes from the right and the values inside the parentheses are wind pressure coefficients. The frames are spaced 6 meters apart on centers. Determine the external reactions at the hinges due to a wind speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Dead loads are 4.5 kilonewtons per meter length of frame members. So this is the typical interior frame and the values inside the parentheses are wind pressure coefficients. So first, let's compute the wind pressure, which is equal to 0 0.0473 velocity square, where velocity is in kilometers per hour and the resulting pressure is in pascals. So pressure equals Q equals 0 0.0473 V square. So pressure equals 0 0.0473 times 250 square, and it is equal to 2956 pascals or 2.956 kilopascals. Then the uniform load, wind load, would be equal to the wind pressure coefficient times the pressure times the width perpendicular to the screen, which is the spacing of the frames 6 meters. So W1, call that W1 as our guide solution, then the rest. Uh, we'll compute directly the component loads. So W1 equals wind pressure coefficient 0.5 times wind pressure 2.956 times 6 meters. So that would be in kilonewton per meter. So 0.5 times 2.956 times 6, 8.868 kilonewton per meter. So therefore, if I call this F1, which is the resultant load due to this uniform pressure diagram w1 so we have f1 which acts half of 89 meters from e and 9 meters from d also is equal to w1 times 18 and it is equal to f1 w1 8.868 times 18 equals 159.62 kilonewtons then we have here on CD the horizontal component which is to the left because it is positive pressure and downward and the left side force is equal to which acts at the center or centroid of this inclined frame is equal to W2 and W2 is 0.2 times 2.956 times 6 so that's 159.62 and that's 9 meters 9 meters also from D so W2 is 0.2 times 2.956 times 6 and it is equal to 3.547 kilonewtons per meter so therefore the horizontal component which is leftward is equal to 3.547 times this vertical projection 8 and it acts, of course, the centroid, and this is 4 meters, 4 meters also from the top. And that is 28.376. Again, 28.376 kilonewtons is 3.547 times 8. So I'm not showing it here. I'm just mentioning it. Then the vertical component is downward. It is equal to 3.547 times 15. And... 3.547 times 15 is equal to 53.205 kilonewtons. So it is 7.5 meters from C horizontally and from D as shown. Then for 
The horizontal component of wind load on BC, it is also leftward because it is suction, so away, uh, leftward, and upward. So it is away supposedly, and it is equal to W3, which is equal to 0.3 times 2.956 times 6, and it is equal to 5.321 kN per meter, therefore 5.321 kN per meter times 5, that's the horizontal force on BC, it acts at the center, leftward. And it is 26.605 kN. The vertical component of wind load is upward, so because this is suction, so it is 5.321 times 12 and it is 63.852 so take note that this is the center therefore 6 meters from B horizontally 6 meters from C also horizontally and vertically half of 5 2.5 that's also 2.5 from B then W4 is 0.4 times 2.956 times 6 and it is 7.094 kN per meter this is suction so it is leftward also so F Four here is equal to 7.094 times the vertical projection which is 24 and that's 170.26 kilonewtons it is 12 meters from A vertically and 12 meters from B also vertically as shown in the figure then for the weight of each member so let's begin with this vertical member here it is 4.5 kilonewton per meter times the length which is 24 and it acts also at the center of gravity or center here which is equal to 108 kN. Then for BC it is 4.5 times the length of BC. The length of BC is square root of 12 square plus 5 square so 13 meters. 4.5 times 13 is equal to downward gravity load 58.5 kN. Next is 4.5 for the weight of CD. 4.5 times the length of CD, which is square root of 15 square plus 8 square, that's 17 meters. 4.5 times 17 is equal to 76.5 kilonewtons. And finally, for the weight of DE, which acts here at the center, 9 meters from E and 9 meters from D, it is equal to 4.5 times the length, which is 18 meters, and that is 81 kilonewtons. Now that we have completed the loads, we now analyze it by considering the whole system. We sum up moments about E equals 0. Let's put the reactions here. Let's assume AX rightward and AY upward. Same is true at E. EX rightward, positive rightward, and EY upward as shown. The distance between A and E vertically is equal to 29 minus 29 meters minus 26 meters. So this is 24 plus 5, 29, 18 plus 8, 26. So therefore, this is 3 meters. I'm not showing it here. Uh, just remember, this is 3 meters. So to make the moment of AX positive, let's assume counterclockwise as positive. So it is AX times 3. Summation moment about E equals 0, considering the whole system. AX times 3, then plus. So let's consider the forces, uh, counterclockwise, positive, horizontal, then vertical. So this is counterclockwise also, 170.26. 12 minus 3 is 9, so the moment arm is 9. So plus 170.26 times 9. Plus the moment of this weight, 108. The distance is 12 plus 15, 27. So plus 108 times 27. Then plus the moment of this horizontal load, 26.605. The moment arm is 26. This is 26 minus 2.5. 26 minus 2.5 is 23.5. So plus 26.605 times 23.5. Then plus 58.5. This is 6. And this is 15. So 6 plus 15, 21. So plus 58.5 times 21. Then plus 28.376. 4 plus 18 is 22, so plus 28.376 times 22, 
then let's combine these vertical forces so plus quantity 53.205 plus 76.5 times 7.5 so quantity 53.205 plus 76.5 times 7.5 then plus 159.62 times 9 then 81 passes through A, so it's not involved. Then equals, clockwise moments, we have AY times 27, and plus 63.852 times 6 plus 1521. So 63.852 times 21. Simplifying, forming the first equation, 3AX minus 27AY equals negative 7994.8 call that equation 1 then we consider the free body diagram of ABC we just imagine and we only consider forces on ABC we sum up moments about C equals 0 considering counterclockwise positive so that uh, AX is positive here so we have AX times 24 plus 529 then plus 108 times 12 counterclockwise counterclockwise uh, clockwise clockwise so plus 58.5 58.5 times 6 then equals ay times 12 then plus 170.26 times quantity 12 plus 517. So plus 170.26 times 17. Then plus 26.605 times 2.5. Then plus 63.852 times 6. So simplifying, we have the second equation 29ax minus 12ay equals. 1697 call that equation 2 so with your calculator solving these two equations simultaneously then we have ax equals 189.8 kilonewton so it's correct rightward and ay equals uh, 317.2 kilonewton so because both are positive then they are directed as shown in this figure then for ex and EY, we sum up moments about A considering uh, the whole system and clockwise positive this time because the moment of EX is clockwise about A and the moment arm is 3. So summation moment about A equals 0 clockwise positive EX times 3. Then this is counter, this is clockwise plus 81 times 15 plus 12, 27. Then these two combined uh, plus quantity 53.205 plus 76.5, 7.5 plus 12, 19.5 moment arm. Then plus 26.605, 2.5 plus 24 is 26.5, so plus. Uh, 58.5 rather clockwise still clockwise 58.5 times 6 this is counter 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 so equals EY times 27 so we have here plus 156.62 times 12 because this is 9 plus 3 so 12 moment arm 159.62 times 12 then we have this one is counterclockwise 28.376 times the moment arm is 29 minus 4 so 25 so plus 28.376 times 25 then plus 26.605 uh, times 24 plus 2.5, 26.5. So 26.605 times 26.5 plus 
plus 63.852 times 6. Then lastly, plus 170.26 times 12. So simplifying this equation, we have 3ex minus 27ey equals 688.86. Call that equation 3. Then considering CDE, we sum up moments about C equals 0, considering counterclockwise positive. So both EX and EY will be counterclockwise about C. So we have EX times 18 plus 8, 26. Then plus EY times 15. Then all these forces will be... Uh, We'll have clockwise moment about C, so equals, let's begin with 159.62, so 159.62 times quantity 9 plus 8, so 17, so times 17, plus 81 times 15, plus 28.376 times 4, that's 4, then plus moment of these two vertical forces combined about C, quantity 53.205 plus 76.5 times 7.5. Then, then we simplify this into 26EX plus 15EY equals uh, 5014.8. So call that equation 4, solving equations 3 and 4 simultaneously. Then we have EX equals 195.1 kN, so it is correct, rightward, and EY is equal to negative 3.837 kN, so it is supposedly downward. So I leave the checking for you. I already checked this, and it, it is in equilibrium. Just apply summation versus X, summation versus Y. So that's it for this video and for this problem i hope that you were able to follow the solutions because i already narrate the calculations of these loads but i slowly set up the equations for you to follow